In today's video, I'm gonna show you how we can use the highlight feature inside of Generate Blocks to kind of hack into that class and be able to do all kinds of different customizations with it. In this video, we'll create these three different looks here, but it'll give you the ability to really highlight or emphasize text in any way you want. So let's go ahead and dive in and take a look at how it works. So we're gonna start here by just adding a section to our page and adding a headline in here as well. I'm just gonna center align this and I'm gonna say, let's highlight this. So we'll go ahead and select the word highlight. And here in this drop down arrow, we're going to collect this highlight here that has the marker next to it, which is the generate blocks one. So typically when you do this, this just unlocks the ability to use this highlight color. So we can come here and say, we want this to be orange and it's going to make that color orange. However, we could leave this blank and we could just take advantage of this span tag with the class being added to do whatever kind of emphasis we want on the text, which is exactly what we're gonna look at now. So I'm just gonna leave that highlight color blank. We're gonna go ahead and update this page, view it on the front end, and jump in here into the customizer so we can write some CSS. So the first thing I'm gonna do is a pretty simple gradient text color. So the word highlight here, instead of being a solid color like we could have done in the UI, we're actually going to make this a gradient color. So to do this and to do all of these effects we're going to do, we're just going to target the class GB hyphen highlight. And we can see here if I just change the color here to red, you can see it's changing to red. So what we're going to do to create a gradient for this is we're going to do a background image and we'll do linear gradient. And we're gonna do, let's say 45 degrees, and I got a couple hex codes here. So E96443, comma, 904E95. And I gotta make sure to spell gradient correct. There we go. So now we can see the gradient is coming behind this text here. And the next thing we need to do is make the color of the text transparent. And then we need to clip the background around the text. So for that, we'll do WebKit, background, clip, text. And just like that, we've used that highlight system to actually give ourselves some gradient text, which is a pretty neat little effect. But there's a lot more we can do with this. Let's take, for instance, a highlight marker type look. So for this, we'll do, again do GB highlight. We're gonna do a background color of yellow. And then we're going to do a bunch of different border radiuses to make this actually look a little bit more like an organic type shape. So here we'll do border, top, left, radius, and we're going to do two different values. I'm going to do 255 pixels and 15 pixels. Then we'll do border, top, right, radius, and here we'll do 15 pixels and 255 pixels. Then we'll do border, bottom, right, radius, 255 pixels, 15 pixels, and then border, bottom, left, radius, 15 pixels, 255 pixels. And you can see when I do that, it actually kind of, the way these border radiuses work, it actually kind of makes this shape just a little bit wonky. So it looks less like straight lines. Now for me, I'd probably actually want this to come out just a little bit further on the left and right. So to do that, we can just do some padding in line, which is the left and right padding. 0.15M is probably enough. And you can see that space it out just enough to give us room for that highlight in there. So now by just using that little highlight drop down, we can actually have text that looks like it's been highlighted. Now, I wanna take this one step further and jump in here and start using some pseudo elements. So I actually took advantage of this on a project recently for a client where they needed like a background color and an underline on some emphasized text. And it was gonna be reused throughout the site and I wanted to give them the ability to just click a button and have that effect appear. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna jump in here and we're gonna do the GB highlight again. And we're gonna set this position to relative. Now we're gonna to have to come back here in a minute and add some more things, but for now that will get us started. Now we're gonna do GB highlight and we're gonna do the after pseudo element. So for this, we need to do a position of absolute. We need to do a content of just blank. So that's just two blank quote marks. Uh, we're gonna to have to come and add a background image in a minute. 
So I'm just gonna put that in there for now as a placeholder. We'll have to come back and add that. Uh, we're gonna do a background size of cover. Background repeat of no repeat. A width of 105% because we want it to be a little bit wider than the word itself. A height of six pixels. It, we're gonna we're gonna move it off the bottom by two pixels and we're gonna move it to the left by negative 2.5%. And we're doing that because we're making the width 105%, so we want to kind of bring it back over uh, half the distance of that. So I'm gonna go ahead and publish these changes. We're gonna go back in here and go into our media library where I've already uploaded this underline. So we're gonna go ahead and copy this URL Jump back in here, and for the background image, we can type URL, open parentheses, and open quote marks, and paste this URL in. Now we can see we have this image that's showing up here underneath the word to kind of emphasize it, but we want to do a couple more things to it. So first, I want to make sure this is going behind the text. So to do that, I'm just going to give the text itself a Z index of 2, and we'll go on here and give the underline a Z index of negative one, and that will make sure that it's there behind the text. Now, I also want to give a background color to this text to look like it's been highlighted as well. So we'll go back in here to our original GB highlight, and we'll do a background color, and I have a hex code saved here of F5BD6920. And you can see that's a real light uh, opacity of the same color of this underline here. Now again, we might want to give this a little bit of padding inline, so we'll say 0.15m, and that will give us a little room on the left and right. Go ahead and publish this, and we'll go jump back into the editor of this page now that we got this one set. And when we're in here, we can't see all of the effects. Uh, the Gutenberg editor overrides some of them. But we can see if we just go ahead and add another headline here, like headline, this is cool, and then we highlight the word cool and add the highlight to it, we get that same effect right here inside the editor. Now you're probably wondering why I would even bother using the highlight feature to do all this if I'm going to have to write all the CSS anyways. And the reason I actually like doing this is because there's a built-in feature inside the UI that lets us attach that span tag around text. If we were to do this manually, every time we wanted to use it, we'd have to edit the headline in HTML, add the span tag around it, add the class to it, and save it. With this method, we're actually just hooking into something that already exists and generate blocks. And if we're not using that color feature the way it was intended, and we're gonna use it in this new way across the entire website, it gives us the ability to just select something, click highlight, and we're absolutely done. We've done all the work of adding the span tag and the class to that without having to go in and do a whole bunch of extra manual labor. Is it a perfect solution? Probably not. Is it a little hacky? Maybe so, but I found this to be really useful in a lot of different situations, and it was something I wanted to share with you. If you'd like to catch some other videos I've done, there should be some cards popping up here, and make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you can catch us on the next video. We'll see you then.